we are Skinner Box. We are live back from Berlin and we play live electronic music um, in an improvised fashion. My name is Olaf, I play the Minimoog synthesizer. My name is Iftach and I uh, use Ableton Live and several drum machines and small hardware synths. We are here at our Berlin-based studio and we would like to present you the SBX 2049. Now, we were luckily enough to collaborate with uh, the folks at Ableton and to program our own small special machine, which is a, an FM-based drum synth, which is kind of representing our sound because we, as we already said, we, we work with a lot of analog gear as one can see here, but we also very much like the digital domain. Our approach was to uh, produce a drum machine that expands the capabilities of analog style drum machines into the digital domain. So we decided to use the FM synthesis for this. So I think it's the best if we just show you what it's all about. What you're going to see after you loaded the plugin into a, a live track is this section, which is basically the mixer section. You can mute every voice, you can change the panning and obviously the sound level. And then you're going to click the open button right here and you're going to get the main panel of the SBX 2049. And as you can see, it's quite straightforward. Here is the voices section, the bass drum, you got two toms, you got a snare drum, a hi-hat and a cymbal. Uh, down here you got the sequencer. It's a typical TR chase light sequencer with some twists. And alternatively you got the LFO section, which is parameter modulators for each one of the parameters on the panel. So I just loaded up a preset, which can, uh, it's a good start to give a kind of impression of how it can sound and I'm just going to play it, first of all. So as you can see it's Quite simple sounding. Uh, I'm going to start by uh, changing the step length, for example. It's a polyrhythmic sequencer. You can choose the beat divisions for each channel. For example, we just randomly change them here. You can also adjust the direction of the sequence. And you can also randomize each sequence. I'm going to give you now a, a quick impression about the uh, sound engine and how to actually use it. We start with the bass drum patch, where you can adjust the tune first of all. You can see it's, uh, it's in a typical range of a bass drum, so this is a specified module. You have a drive does the usual square distortion thing. Then you have the decay, all the usual functions that are applied to a bass drum. You have a pitch, which makes a small attack pitch in the, in the beginning with the decay. You can see you can drive it very far actually. Far about uh, all the frequencies. Then you have a, an overtones um, engine which um, adds FM-wise overtones to the to the sound, which make it more digital. I would say, quality-wise. You can uh, you can adjust the structure, which is actually as you can hear the uh, the structural aspects of the overtones. They're controlled over the decay here. And so you can, um, you can add an attack, a special sounding attack to a bass drum. The next thing is the snare drum module. Turn it a bit louder. You have also like noise here. And the actual sound, the, the sine wave, as we can call it. Also, you have drive and all the parameters. There's some uh, there's some aspects of the noise engine, which is 
shortly seen here. Parameters called noise speed because this noise is not actually white noise, it's more or less random but controlled random noise which you can control here. Now I introduce you to the symbol engine which you can hear here, making a small, very not noisy sound at all. You have this noise speed parameter here which speeds up the noise and yeah, makes this interesting fade possible. Then you have a tune function, as in all patches actually, in all sounds. And some, some, some functions that apply the noise to the actual tone of the cymbal. Attack and decay as usual and use also for small sounds like hi-hats and any metallic or snare drums. It's flexible as you can see. So I would like to show you another two very nice features. The first is the L4 section or better said the parameter modulator section. So if you click on this tab the L4 tab, you get this screen with the six L4s. Let me just press play, so we're gonna have a running pattern on the background. So basically, they are all off. Now I'm going to turn this one on. This one is uh, uh, assigned to the amount parameter of the first tom voice, of the first tom patch. So once I turn it on, you can see it slowly modulating here. You can also hear it and you can choose the waveform that all the typical waveforms set you got the sine, triangle, a square and so on you just set it to triangle form then you can choose between a free mode and a sync mode if you choose a sync mode it will sync to the tempo of life based on Beat divisions and free mode will be of course free. This is uh, here the low end and the high end is the way to adjust the range of the modulation. Let's say I set it to 25 till 70, so we got a lower range. So this is basically the LFO section. So I'm about to show you the random functions of the drum machine. You can basically random every voice. Those question marks here are actually push buttons that you can push and will randomize the corresponding voice. And you also got this very big button, which is very dangerous because it randomizes everything and you can really not tell how it will come out, but usually the result is quite cool. We're going to try to listen to it. So I'm just going to play it. I'm going to randomize the bass drum channel. get the idea. So, I got here this dial is the morph time. It means that if I'm going to take it slightly up, let's say these values are milliseconds, to two and a half seconds, and press the randomize all button, the progress of the randomization will take exactly two and a half seconds which can create very, very interesting process in the middle. Let's try the same with a very, very long decay. Let's say 10 seconds, which is the maximum. As you can hear, it's very, very cool to create really interesting evolving patterns and sounds. Another thing is that you actually don't have to use the chase light sequencer. If you want, you can also sequence it using a standard MIDI live MIDI clip and it will receive voices C3 to F3 respectively. So you just sequence them and you can play it normally with a MIDI clip. Then you can kind of make very very long sequences, arrangement style, also if you play it live. So I'm 
sometimes it comes very handy.